Excellent. I think that's us now. So I'll just start. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, delighted to see all of you and lots more people joining. My name is Aisha Holloway. I am the Programme Director for Nursing Now Challenge. I'm based at the University of Edinburgh as Professor of Nursing Studies. And I'm really delighted today that I will be sitting in like the rest of you listening to this fantastic uh a webinar that has been put together by Zabe, Sana and colleagues in the Emerald region. And I hope you enjoy it. It's wonderful to see some um, faces that I recognise, Angelique, um, particularly. Uh, it's lovely to see you join and Mohammed, Rita, Sana, etc. And Elise looks, I love that background there. So wonderful to see you. I will hand over to Zabin who will um, take it away and I hope you enjoy the next hour. Take care everyone, bye. Thank you so much Professor Aisha and thank you so much for joining. Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar, Exploring New Horizons Research for Nurses. My name is Zabunusa Karim and I am co-chair for Eastern, Eastern Mediterranean Nursing Now Challenge Committee. And along with me, here are two new speakers with fabulous, extensive experience in different fields. They will be going through uh, sharing their expertise in working with healthcare professionals, especially nurses and midwives, and share their learnings, challenges, barriers, and their um, experiences and their recommendations and what and way forward. So let's start with uh, our first speaker, Dr. Shalina Bhamani. Uh, she is a PhD in education with specialization early childhood development, uh, program director for outreach education, lead ECD, uh, lead ECD parenting program, and assistant professor outreach obstetrics in gynecology. Uh, she is also very active in social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. She tweets a lot, share her updates and uh, her mentorship skills. She is one of my uh, mentor. She mentored me a lot. Uh, 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 show me a lot of opportunities, how I can break my barrier, my comfort zone, and bring my uh, professional career and skills to the high level. So thank you so much, Dr. Sharina, for joining our session, our webinar, and sharing your expertise. So over to you, Dr. Sharina. Thank you so much, Zeb. The uh, journey was equally full of learning for me as well from you. I've learned so much in life about profession and everything from you. So thank you so much once again. Um, Say, do you want me to just simply uh, share my window? Am yes, I allowed to share? Okay, yes, yes, yes. All right. Uh, so I'd like everyone to please use the best of the check logs. I may not be able to see as I'm navigating the session, but I'll be happy to respond to all the questions and queries and see if I could be still be active on the chat while presenting. So thank you for the introduction. We will, um, since Zeb told me, the topic is about um, talking about engaging nurses uh, in research. I'd like you all to please quickly write one word as to when it comes to your mind, what do you think nursing in research or research for nursing is all about? Use the check log and just let us know what is that one word that comes to your mind. Mm -hmm. A short disclosure statement. I'm not going to really work <laughs> comprehensively on this. This is my institutional requirement. So I'm just putting it up for 30 seconds. Thanks. All right. So before we get into understanding research and the role and the critical uh, appraisal nursing field requires in the public health research, let's just quickly go through what public health research is all about. So this is a research that aims at improving population health outcomes. All of us, whether it's whoever stakeholders are in the healthcare sector, we have one aim to improve the lives of human beings around us. And this is what public health research is all about. Trust me, I'll be starting on this note. It is not about building career. It is not about extensive resumes. It's not about your citations, but it's about improving lives. Research is to enable practitioners to build evidence to save and to benefit human lives. It's for the preventive, it's from the health promotion perspective, it's from the policy development perspective. Evidence is pretty much important for every aspect and element of public health. 
And like a really I love Florence Nightingale's, um, you know, quotation, I'm sure, which as nurses, you would be hearing it every time you would take oaths. Nursing is an art. And if it, do, it is to be made an art, it requires an exclusive devotion, as hard as preparation as any painter's or sculptor's work. How beautifully it is said, right? Your profession is so novel. Your profession is so demanding that it requires so much hard work. And nurses around the world, they are globally recognized for their hard work. They're putting their heart and soul in every effort that they do. And the role of the nurses in the public health research or research cannot be negated. You guys are frontliner, you guys are community educators, you guys are advocates, you guys are data collectors. I'm using this word data collectors because I've seen a lot of nursing community engaged in research and used as data collectors. But at the end of the day, we all know nurses have a great, great role in contributing to the evidence. So I'd also like to add one more word that nurses are innovators. Nurses are knowledge builders. And I would really like all nurses to live by this vision of becoming those innovators and new knowledge and evidence creators. It's very important to understand the engagement of nurses in public health research. And the data is not very promising, to be very honest. In one of the National Institute of Nursing research talks about that only 10% of nurses worldwide are actively involved in research, contributing to the critical advancement. So imagine just as low as 10%. I'm, I'm very certain that most of you are engaged, but it's not showing in the data. Why? Because nurses are often not provided with that authorship in a lot of researches. But as per data, only 10% nurses are engaged in nurses actively. Over 30% of the nurses in developed countries have participated in health-related research. And as per International Councils of Nurses, they also further define that there are many barriers that nurses' community have to face when their inclusion in, with respect to research as well. Only 14% nurses in U.S. account for healthcare publication related to public health in the last decade. Just look at the numbers, you know. Uh, it does not reflect our true efforts as nursing community in research engagement. And there is a dearth of engagement in lower middle income countries. When it comes to countries like Pakistan, Afghanistan, Africa, you know, there are many nurses who are engaged in research, but they are not given full acknowledgement to do that research. But the role of nursing must not be forgotten because it's one of the ways to acknowledge nurses and their role in healthcare stream. I'd like to play this short video before we go on to some practical tips as to how you can further engage yourself. But I'd like to show this video first. This is why you need to know about the power of nurse-led research. Nurses are not just caregivers, they are innovators. Imagine nurses turning everyday challenges into groundbreaking research. They see what truly works and what doesn't. By transforming their experiences into research, nurses can shape better healthcare policies, practices, and outcomes. Nurses are the frontline observers, the problem solvers. Engaging them in research means unlocking real world solutions to healthcare's toughest problems. This is how we build a system that's more responsive, compassionate, and effective. Nurses, your insights can lead the way. Let's empower you with the tools, the platform, and the opportunity to revolutionize healthcare through research. When nurses lead, healthcare advances. So make sure uh, when you go after this session, you are those nurses who advance the research in public healthcare stream. This is why. But naturally, the thing comes uh, in mind that if we do have, um, if we do have to scale our careers as researchers, as nurses who are engaged in research, well-recognized, well-acknowledged. But what are the challenges nursing stream face when it comes to research? The first and foremost is the financial constraint. Institutions do have a lot of resources built in uh, for medical researchers, for uh, professionals who are related to uh, medical sciences. But there's a financial constraint when it comes to nursing research as well. There's a dearth of research grants seed grants to support nurse-led researchers. 
there's a low involvement in research design. So, you know, I have seen, because I work in the clinical settings as well, I've seen that there are ideas, there are research projects, and nurses are just used as data collectors. They are not involved in research design. They are not given that opportunity to be one of the key stakeholders in designing of the research. So there is a low involvement in that stage as well. There's a lot of demanding workload as well, because the moment we think of nurse, we think of care. You know, nurses are always a synonym of care and patient-centric care. You know, there are questions of the patient. There are questions from the family members, always nurses in the filling blanks. And there is a lot of volume provided to nursing, particularly in lower middle income countries. And that is one of the reasons that there is, the workload is so demanding that the nurses are hardly left with mind, soul, and, you know, the capacity to conduct research. So this is one of the major reasons that there is a lack of nursing engagement in the research as well. And in my personal opinion, as well as Miller and Swart uh, talked about, that there is insufficient formal education and training. You know, you pick up a nursing curriculum and at bachelor's level, at the uh, RN level, at the diploma level, it's a very limited scope, particularly in lower middle income country, to do implementation research, to do clinical research, to do randomized clinical trials to participate in the core research functionalities as well. So there is also a different curriculum and different in training. So that differences and those gaps continue to build on. And the nurses who take the practice pathway, they are not well prepared. They have insufficient training and capacity to perform the task of research or to conduct research or to plan research. But with challenges, there should also be a model of nursing engagement and how together as a community of practice, we can engage nurses. I'd like to take a uh, opportunity to present the slide later, but I'd like to first give this note to all the nurses who are here. That you know, first, before any institutional support, you can see that there's a lot of institutional support, education and skill, collaborative network, but before anybody else help you, to uh, scale up the research and research skills, it's very important that you as practitioners, or I would say us as practitioners, we need to build and work on our research career. We need to understand what do we need to do in order to scale those research skills in ourselves. So there are some tips uh, from my knowledge and information that I would like to share with you. There is a difference between will and skills. I have seen many nurses who are so willing to be engaged in nursing research or in any public health related research, but somewhat they lack skills. So it's very important to know that if you have a will, you should also need to have a skill. So as much as you are willing to do research, mm -hmm. also try to attain a lot of courses, also try to attain a lot of skill building workshops around research as well. So it's not only your will, but will with skill. There is a thought and there is a plan. We've seen many nurses coming to us with an idea. Oh, look, I have this research idea. Can I do this? No, idea has to be converted into research plans. So whenever you have an idea, look out. Look out for different protocols. Look out for different people who have worked on this idea, how they have tailored that idea, how they have sketched a plan out of their idea. Make practical plans. When you have plans, those plans could become grant applications, whereby you can apply for some researches as well. Rota versus recognition. <laughs> we all understand the nurses who are in practice stream or who are in clinical streams, they have rotas. Now, you need to understand that as a nurse, it is not in your rota to connect, collect any physician or any allied health or any social science data. Although you are on rota to do your clinical practice, you are not in rota to collect the data. So if you're asked to collect the data, understand that what it means for you to be participating in that research. If you're asked to analyze the data, if you are given a graph that look as a part of your duty, can you analyze this for me? Or as a part of your duty, can you just work with me on this paper? Understand that recognition is also very important. Uh, this is not your rota and in no terms of reference of any clinical nurses to do research. But if it is there, ensure that you are well recognized as well. First, understand what are the authorship criteria, and then demand those authorship criteria before getting into any research. Collaboration versus commitment. Also understand often nurses are 
told that okay this is a quality study you know this is a part of the accreditation requirement this is a part of the jci requirement this is a part of some other accreditation requirement that collaboration is good for patient centric care but you also need to show the commitment to disseminate this data to the community outside so know that there are many quality researches that you as nurses do there are many quality studies there are many quality audits that you do which can also be converted into data and evidence so try to publish those you have so much skill so much capacity to conduct that research but there is just one thing that you need to understand is that you as much as you're collaborating for those things try to also make a commitment to disseminate those findings as well there's also a difference that you need to understand between showcasing versus self promotion many of the nurses you know have seen feel so good about if they are acknowledged by their department but sometimes nurses <clears throat> also need to advocate themselves this world is a world of social media so advocate your voice bring out your voice with small small start from small things start from writing four liners what do you think about this particular phenomenon start writing four lines about what do you think why oncological cancers are on the rise so start self promoting yourself your ideas this will give you a lot of confidence to write things this will give you a lot of confidence to advocate what you feel so get into those writing streams as well promote yourself promote your thoughts and ideas to the world outside and people will start connecting with you as well just do not become satisfied if your departmental head is cheering you up in front of everyone and giving you round of applause that is not the standard you should compromise on also understand that as nurses i've seen many nurses that they are everywhere versus expert in the field if you want to start research it's good to start by accompanying yourself with a senior researcher and working on a topic but it's not good to be everywhere you know i've seen nurses whose papers are in emergency whose papers are in oncology whose papers are in early childhood whose papers are in maternal mental health you know you i mean being everywhere will not give you any relevance in the field take one field take one idea and start collaborating with people and experts in the field and become the expert of that field you know i'm sure uh, i'm not too sure if you guys have heard about barnet dr barnet had cre created a parent child nursing satellite model she's very famous for that she's expert in that field so the moment you think of her that expertise will come in your mind so if you are starting your research journey please ensure that you are not going everywhere but you are limiting yourself to your expertise and area and the second point is also the same <clears throat> trust me it is very easy i could be second author first author third author and i could keep building my research repository nursing research or any research in the world is not about building repository it's about being relevant remember public health research is to build evidence and evidence that could support the good of the human so please when you are starting your research do not keep ticking okay i'm the first author in this paper i'm the second author in this paper you might have 500 papers but if you're not relevant in the field nobody will value you so when you are starting your research make it a point that you are doing research because you want to contribute in the field and you don't just want the numbers of manuscripts on your cv this is not the way that we start research so this is how as nurses or as anyone we could be able to start building our research careers now the help that can be provided to us by the institution or by system is Uh, those uh, nurses who are part of the curriculum development committee or education and skill development committee please introduce nursing electives on research uh, nurse led research seed grants should also be provided there should be workshop regular seminars on research skills for nurses as well there should be some access to the resources provided to the nurses you know the institution where i work in uh, nurses are not allowed to fill in erc until they are on the faculty cadre so it's also very important that if you have a practice nursing practice community they should also be allowed to do some researches on their own become part of collaborative networks nursing now is such a great platform avail the leadership opportunities try to become co-investigators in different researches start from becoming a part of a research and then do your own research also remember that uh, if you are able to do Uh, some researchers the ones who are institutional leaders here i urge them that if you see a good emerging nursing researcher try to recognize them try to provide incentives to them so that it motivates them it 
becomes their passion to work towards this. There's a lot, there's so many awards for medical faculty, so many awards for uh, educators. We also need so many awards for nurse-led researchers as well, who are particularly in the clinical settings as well. So with this, I'd like to just end my uh, session that nurses are not just the backbone of the healthcare, they are the visionaries. And now it's the time for nurses to become innovators as well as evidence and knowledge generators and creators. Thank you so much. And I'm happy for any sort of questions that you might have my way. Uh, over to you, Zeb. I'm done presenting. Thank you so much, Dr. Shalina. Um, that was a fantastic, marvelous, excellent presentation. I can see a lot of comments in the uh, chat box. People are appraising and they are saying that it should be repeated again at a global platform with more nurses approach because that's the presentation that you, uh, you know, hit the nail on the right that yes, the nurses need to go beyond and look for the opportunities and the, the two models that you share, how they can build research engagement and uh, models that a role of leadership, academics, nursing itself, nurses itself and how they can collaborate with other healthcare professionals to um, build their research projects, identifying needs and uh, how they can go about authorships and making an impact. That's the main thing that Whatever you do, how many numbers you have of the publications, but in creating an impact, bringing innovation and changes is the most uh, important thing. Uh, these are the, uh, like, you know, I cannot just um, summarize in a few seconds, but your presentation is, like, really worth it. So uh, we currently don't have any questions. If anyone has any questions for Dr. Sherina's presentation or any comment, please do share in the chat box, and we will uh, share with her uh, for her response. So uh, I would like to thank Dr. Shalina for coming and joining our webinar and sharing her experiences. I have one question. Actually, you covered all the major points, but yes, I would like to ask uh, specifically, uh, what is the role of the healthcare leadership in any organization in order to promote nurses to work in collaboration to enhance their growth? Uh, what processes specifically they can build, like you share about um, nurse-led grants? Uh, other than this, what other simple processes they can initiate so that nurses can come forward, specifically bedside nurses who are, you know, in a routine of rota that we talk about rotations and they just do work and then they go and come again and work. So how can they, you know, uh, enlighten their nerve impulses and go beyond and have a slight transition or maybe uh, find, find observations and build on to research and you know, these kind of things? Uh, thank you so much, Zeb. Uh, first of all, I guess the innovation or any integration in the program starts from the education institution. Mm -hmm. So every nursing institute, those who are producing MSCN, they have a lot of thesis, right? So when I was doing my PhD, I was told that I can only get my PhD degree if I'm able to disseminate and take out one paper from my PhD thesis. So, you know, they would keep following up until I would disseminate the data. We write big ethics papers and big, big ethics sessions, but always research dissemination is missing. So one is the educational one part where MSCN nurses should be allowed to hold a poster presentation or any sort of dissemination of their research. Coming on to the bed and the clinical side nursing as well, the best way to engage nurses, especially in lower middle income country, is to have one of the competency inbuilt in the leadership that you will only be promoted or you will only be given appraisal if X percentage of your clinical nurses have published or participated or attained skills in research. You see, you have to take a very conventional approach to it. Like I know in my appraisal, I have to supervise four master's thesis students in order to get excellent rating. That is how you need to inbuild these ratings for the leaders. Second, non-conventional ways are to promote culture of research as well. So ensure that whichever quality audits nurses are engaged in, we should have grand rounds, introduce a lot of grand rounds so that they present their researches. And also third way is to 
channelize that pathway for bedway, uh, bed uh, side nurses as well. If it's an emergency department, have a grand round of emergency department nurses. Have a grand round for pediatric nurses when nursing are presented. And fourth thing is to institutionalize by keeping a seed grant for nurses. There is a seed grant for faculty. There is a student grant. We really want a grant focused on bedside nurses, particularly clinical nurses. If they are not the PI in that grant, that grant should not be awarded. Absolutely. Uh, major points were discussed by you. Yes, we need grants and different approaches from the institutions and organizations. We have Clinton uh, Henry. So, uh, Hannah, if we can unmute him and him or her, he, or she can ask questions. Or Clinton can post in the chat box and I can ask from Dr. Sherina. Hi, Dr. Sherina. Um, thank you so much for your wide informative presentation. I'm Clinton. Um, I'm a PhD student here in Canada at the University of Alberta. I just, I, I'm just inquisitive about a question um, that one of my previous students asked me about research, and she was quite concerned about the issue of uh, evidence, informed and evidence-based research now. Like there is a gradual shift to the best of my knowledge that research um, uh, policy rather implementation is shifting from evidence-based policy to evidence-informed, meaning most politicians or most people at the level of uh, decision-making in healthcare and nursing are gradually incorporating their values or other forms to be able to maybe design policies. And um, this is pretty much concern a pretty much a concern rather from young people, young nurses about how relevant um, their research work will be in the in the uh, policy um, development process kind of stuff. So I'm like, what do you what do you have in mind concerning this issue of um, um, nurses getting involved in research? Um, and at the end of the day, they still feel like their research work is not being used in the to inform policy and what can you tell us to encourage us continue um, in this journey of research? Thank yes, you. Yes, um, thank you so much. This yeah. is a prevalent issue when it comes to you know, middle income countries as well. And there is like a dearth of participation of nursing in ministerial tank, think tanks. Uh, so A, we re need to really um, advocate of having um, nurses representation in ministry of women ministry of children ministry of um, general public health so a would be that systems level inclusion second it's very important like i mentioned you can have 200 papers you can have 15000 citations but you need to see that if you're one research paper how far it's giving advocacy to the public is it changing any behavior you know we need to go back to ottawa charter and see is it impacting any changes in the environment? Is it coming in any of the policy advocacy pointers? So I always teach this to my students that as soon as you have a paper published, you have a data. Do not limit it to manuscripts only. Try to make a video of it. Put it on the Facebook. Try to make a small a tweet, tweet out of it. Put it on the world. Try to make a, an advocacy piece out of it published in the newspaper your local newspaper, voice it out. You see, manuscripts are only for academia. How many of the ministries or think tanks would actually be doing lots of scoping and systematic review and informing their policies accordingly, right? Although that's how it should be done. Researchers should be made part of the policy decision-making as well. But if it's not happening, then at least we can opt for alternative pathways to advocate our research, our, our data. Data speaks for itself, trust me. Nurses are nurses and data are like this because specifically the bedside nurses, because they are with the patients every day, they are seeing the emerging trends and everything. So data needs to be advocated. Unless we advocate data to a systems level approach, it is hard that the research papers will be picked and the researchers and the policies will become evidence informed, particularly in the part this part of the world, which is a lower middle income country. I, I highly doubt if we voice it out loud, it, it might not be included. And that, that this is one of the limitations. 
I hope this answers your question. Otherwise, you can ask them the question. No, you did. You did. You hit the nail at the head directly. So thank you so very much. Um, um, like, like my my spirit is highly stirred this morning. I'm like your presentation is fantastic. It's absolutely mesmerizing. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I hope to join you some other time or invite you to yeah. uh, um maybe one of our student bodies so that you can, if you have the time, you can you can just maybe pop up and then do one such presentations like these that can encourage others to like continue doing the great work that Nessie's ought to do. So thank you so much and I really do appreciate it. Oh, thank you, uh, Kenneth. And thank you, Dr. Selena. So uh, uh, I, Dr. Selena has to leave. So if anybody has any questions, they can uh, share with uh, share with Hannah and us and in the chat box. And we can uh, share it with Dr. Shalina and she can respond as soon as possible. And yes, of course, we will um, take her again into some another topic or as requested by you. And we will again pull her to come to our webinar and do any workshop or, of her expert. So thank you so much, Dr. Um, Shalina. Now we have our uh, next speaker, Komal Rahim from Pakistan. So uh, Ms. Komal Rahim is also a nurse by profession. She is also working as a, a research fellow with the uh, Center of Trauma and Excellence and has a, a years of experience in nursing critical care and uh, with the research and with many publications. So over to you, Komal Rahim, and thank you so much for joining again uh, for us in this webinar. Thank you so much, Komal. Yes, over to you. Thank you so much. Do I have guys to share my screen? Yes, I do. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. So thank you so much for the kind introduction, Zeb, but uh, I want to like to reintroduce myself. So I'm a registered nurse in the intensive care units, and then I'm also working as a research fellow at Center of Excellence for Trauma and Emergency at Alcon University. And my degrees are bachelor's of science in nursing and my master's in epidemiology and biostatistics. Um, so in my presentation, I will be covering these objectives, mostly by my experiences and the journey that I have been through in the past few years. So I started my career as a registered nurse when I graduated from the Aarhus University in November 2019. And we all remember this time that pandemic hit the world. So initially it was in China and then it was declared as a global emergency in um, March 2022, March 2020. And since then I've been working as a COVID ICU nurse and I've then worked in internal medicine and surgical ICU, and so I'm now a critical care nurse. So my question is that if I was doing a bedside nursing, how did I end up in research, right? So when I was an undergraduate student, we received um, a scholarship from my university, which was Aarhan University International Internship Program. Uh, and me and Sana, who has also joined us online, we both were the recipient of this um, scholarship. And so we went to South America, um, and I was working in Uni Remington for about six weeks. And there I took a part for research and community work because bedside nursing, we all were doing here in Pakistan. So I wanted something different as research is not really readily taught uh, to nursing curricula as well. So this is how I ended up starting on having a niche in research. And through my visit, I got my first publication out there, which was on multiple cirrhosis. And this was a review of the clinical base guidelines. Now, if I, end, uh, if I ended up in uh, doing research, how did I become a research fellow at Center of Excellence from an emergency? So we all knew that um, every information that was coming in the COVID was very new and very important for the general population as well as for the clinicians for the better outcome of the patients. And since I was working in the COVID ICU, I had this um, initiative and I wanted to do like write research papers and then I put them up on preprint servers and then I just put up the links. These were the three preprint papers which I came up with during my COVID ICU experience. And then I posted them up on Twitter and Facebook. And when people say that social media is powerful, I guarantee you it is. Because then the higher leadership at Aachen University, so if I mention particularly, there, there is Dr. Adil Heather, who is Dean of Medical College. He was actually following me on Twitter. And so he gained attention on me because he needed a nurse who was also uh, doing research or has some experience in research. And that's how I got a job offer 
And that was a time when I became a joint appointee at Aachen University and I was doing both my bedside nursing and my research um, job. So this is the 50-50 joint commitment. And then I enrolled myself in master's in epidemiology and biostatistics because uh, back then I realized that I am more inquisitive towards data, data analysis, numbers. And so I uh, decided to pursue my master's in this. And my thesis title was Charleston Comorbidity Index Amongst Abdominal Surgery Patients as a Predictor for 30 Days Surgical Side Infections. And this was a retrospective cohort study. During my master's, I also received this Fogarty um, Fellowship. So I have M. Fogarty Fellow. And the fellowship that was given to me was Pediatric Infectious Diseases and Direct Health and Malnutrition in Pakistan Research Training Program during my master's. And then I also ended up going to University of Bristol in the United Kingdom for my research internship. So if you look at the journey, it was all possible because of the initiative and the motivation and willingness that I have within. And since then, uh, my research experiences that I have, my publications are now 37, my first other publications are 14 and more than seven papers are under review. If you talk about my areas, so I'm primarily inclined towards systematic reviews and meta-analysis and quantitative data analysis because I've now pursued my master's in epidemiology and biostatistics. And these are my list of systematic review publications. I've also worked with the World Health Organization on their systematic reviews. Um, so there were two systematic reviews in which I have uh, given my time. So one was on the identifying community-based and population-based interventions for children at risk of wasting. And the second one was use of contraceptive empowerment in agency of adolescent health in young women. Um, and then there was another one on the complementary healing. So there were three, which is one, one of them is published right now. And then I've also wrote some book chapters, one of which has just accepted on 25th of September and the other one is in pipeline. So with all this, how can nurses transit from bedside to research? Since I have given my experience as to how I ended up doing research, but it is important, like how can you do it? So the first thing is initiatives is very important. So it all starts within. The second thing which is important is the collaboration and you need to build teamwork abilities and the team around you. The third thing is communication. So you have to identify people who are there in the field and then you have to start talking to them about it. Fourth thing is advancing education because research is a skills, though people may learn it from experience, but I do believe that you need advanced education to excel in the research skills. And fifth thing is that you can attend conferences to connect with the research professionals. Again, the part of networking. If I talk about how did I transition, so I took advantage of the opportunity which was given to me in the undergrad studies and I went to Columbia. The second is choosing what was my interest. So I was inclined towards research. And then I finally realized that, no, I am good with my bedside skills, but I, but I do crave for my research skills as well. The third thing is that I pursued advanced degree in master's in epidemiology and biostatistics. And the fourth thing was willingness to contribute to science. Now, if you talk about the second thing says, what are the key benefits for nurses, both professionally and at personal level? So professional benefits may include that you can have enhanced knowledge base. If you can have deep understanding of the how evidence-based care is provided to the patients. And the second benefit is that you develop skills. So you can improve your critical thinking as well, as well as your analytical skills. Third thing is career advancement, though this should not be your primary goal or primary benefit, but yes, there is in advancement, it doors opens for your leadership and specialized roles. Impact on patient care, because if you are more inclined towards evidence-based care and evidence-based practices, you can contribute to innovative treatments and practices. And then it can also give you collaborative opportunities. So you can build networks with the interdisciplinary teams. Like whenever I go now in intensive care units, there are consultants who now know me as a researcher and a nurse, and they do come and they do share their thoughts and their ideas. And then we have a discussion on that. There are also some personal benefits for you. So it gives you an intellectual satisfaction because it fosters your curiosity and continuous learning. It increases self-confidence because whenever I walk in an intensive care unit, I have so much confidence that oh, I'm today here, I'm going to observe something and I'm going to improve something in the patient care. You get a sense of purpose as you're not going to research just for the, uh, you're going to bedside just for the sake of caring for the patient, but you are also there to have an impactful outcome for the patients by doing something for patients apart from just the care. And then it also gives you a sense of personal fulfillment. Now, why is it important to have research knowledge and experience for a bedside nurse? 
So it is important because again, it, it helps you having evidence-based practices. It can help improve patient outcomes. It fosters and improve your critical thinking skills because some things are in front of our eyes, but since we don't have a critical thinking lens, we don't see things that way. So if we have that critical thinking lens, we could definitely improve patient outcomes. Then staying current because the guidelines are coming up daily, the things are evolutionizing, they're changing daily. And so if you're not into research and you're not actually searching uh, what is new, you're not staying current. And so if there's something out there in the literature that could be beneficial for the patient, you're missing that. It in informed advocacy because it empowers nurses to advocate for patients on solid evidences. It helps you for professional development and it is also helping us to contribute to the healthcare. Now, the other question is that how you could incorporate research skills into your bedside and vice versa. So incorporating research skills into the bedside is that you have to apply your evidence-based guidelines, what you are seeing and observing in your research data set, the evidence that you have generated, you have to apply that onto your bedside nursing or, or else it is not really helpful. The second is that even though there are not many research projects going on, but there are some quality improvement projects that are, that are there for the bedside nurses to improve the patient care. So maybe you should participate in quality improvement projects as well. And through there, you can then have a little bit sense of the research and then you can go ahead with a full-fledged research. And it is important to document and share your findings. As I mentioned, that whatever I saw in COVID patients, I just wrote it and I put it on preprint servers because peer reviewed publications take a lot of time. And so I got um, um, this offer by the Dean of Medical College that he wanted a nurse and then he brought me into his team. And then it is very important to engage in clinical trials as well, where you involve patients in research studies to enhance their care too. And if you flip the coin, incorporating the bedside experience into research, so you have to identify clinical questions as well. So for example, if I say, I have generally observed that patients who are intubated, their pain assessment is often neglected. So I was wondering why is it? So why physicians are not paying attention to it? And then what I observed, what I saw was that they were not really thinking through that lens. And so we thought to design a research where we uh, try to assess their knowledge, their attitudes and their practices towards um, pain assessment in intubated patients particularly. Then it provides you real world insights that offer practical perspective on the implementations and the design of the researches. And then it also helps you to collaborate on the research teams because if you go in the intensive care unit or perhaps in any ward, there are multiple doctors who are doing the research that's part of the residency or perhaps any other thing. And so if you have a collaboration with them, so you can contribute to clinical expertise together. Not only this is important, but it is also important that you also mentor the future researchers. So perhaps if I'm a nurse and I'm also inclined in research and I'm doing a job in research, if there is another nurse who is coming to me and asking for a mentorship, it is my responsibility to ensure that I'm a good mentor to her. So there's a chain. So we can follow a chain for nurses to engage in research. So I always strive to improve the clinical outcomes. So perhaps I am more inclined to work on health disparities. So perhaps I have put the um, picture of an insurance because I think that not only the socio-demographic um, factors of the patients are important, but also the health disparities angle that is often um, compromised, particularly in LMICs. And um, then I try to make use of administrative data because I think ERCs are complex for nurses to take as uh, Dr. Shanila mentioned in her talk. And so the data that is already captured and um, available in the hospitals, I try to make the use of those. And then this is another example where I saw that patients who are uh, critically ill, those are not uh, mobilized, so they're not ambulated. And so I tried to understand again that what are the barriers, what is their knowledge about the early mobilization and early ambulation of the patients, because it is proven in literature that if you are uh, early ambulating the patients, there is chances that patient would have improved recovery and improved outcomes. So these are just the examples of how my observations have led me to do researches in different areas. So how to get involved in research? Number one is to pursue advanced education. Second is to seek research opportunities. Third is to attend conferences and workshops, collaborate with the researchers, and do try to take research methodology courses to, so that you have a more in-depth um, insight as to how researches are, have been done. I want to take this opportunity to thank my amazing mentor, Dr. Adil Heather, who is the Dean of Medical College, and then Dr. Zora Lassi, who is a professor at University of Adelaide, Australia. 
I want to end my presentation with this note that two roads diverged in a wood and I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. Thank you so much. Thank you, Komal. Thank you so much for joining and sharing your journey, your transition, your expertise. It was um, learning for learning for, for everyone that how you come from bedside to research fellow and having a global experience with different universities in different countries. And uh, personal and professional benefits that as you have mentioned, what can be a personal benefit to anyone or professional benefit to anyone, professional growth and in clinical outcomes, strive to clinical outcomes. And the main important thing that we are uh, talking about is impact, the creation of the impact, the change that one needs to bring into their profession or uh, into the work that they are doing. So uh, again, all the questions were, almost all the questions were answered. So just one quick question. So I would like to ask this, what is the biggest challenge you faced in your uh, transition journey specifically uh, that you felt that it was hard to tackle and uh, you know there was no way possible out to tackle that thing and then you overcome it. So if there's an experience of your challenge. Um, yeah, so well, as I mentioned that I was a joint appointee. So I was working both as a bedside nurse and then uh, in the research as well. So the biggest challenge was the time management because balancing patient care with research responsibilities can be very overwhelming. And, but you have to make sure that you are doing your jobs correctly, both at the clinical side and at the research side. So that was the biggest challenge for me. But as I mentioned that Dr. Adil Heather, he was very kind enough that he uh, helped me to manage my time. And he actually allowed me to, you know, don't doing, not doing um, night shifts because as you as mentioned by uh, Dr. Shalina Bhamani that nurses do have to follow rotas and rotations. So he managed that for me. So I was all good because if you are not having a good sleep, if you're doing night shifts and then you are coming up the next morning in the office for your research, then you're not able to do be productive at both sides, right? So time management was one thing. Another thing, again, I would say, initiating a research project myself. So as Dr. Shalina mentioned that nurses are not allowed to obtain an ERC approval. So this is actually true because whenever I have to come up with a, uh, whenever I have to come up with a research question and then I have to initiate a study, I have to rely on any faculty member or any consultant to actually help me in submitting and becoming the PI of my projects. And then I have to take over the projects. So ethical considerations was the second thing. And then third thing again was maintaining the clinical skills. Because I was in my uh, early nursing careers, right? And so it was very important for me. It was sometimes I felt pressurized as well that I have to um, be cognizant of my um, research skills. But side by side, I also have to excel in my clinical skills as well. Research is a skill in itself and clinical and bedside nursing is a skill in itself. So I think while I was focusing on research more, I realized that my nursing skills are like going away from my hand. So then maintaining clinical skills, I think that these were the three challenges that are. So um, thank you so much. Yes, working um, that side and then working in the research is will be a quite challenging and managing shiftings and then workload of the patient as Dr. Sharina mentioned that uh, with the global crisis and the shortage of the nurses, it can it is a quite challenging to manage both the things but yes one if one has to strive something one has to grow into something then one has to uh, you know uh, tackle all the challenges so thank you so much komal for coming for accepting our invitation sharing your journey your transition the whole purpose of this webinar is to motivate our nurses early career nurses mid career nurses around the globally nurses and midwives to Think out of the box, doing the routine shifts and rotations, clinical expertise are fine, but having a different color in their profession, transition from clinical to research is how what impact can they make and how they can grow their profession. So once again, thank you so much, Komal. Uh, moving forward, uh, we have last couple of com uh, remarks or comments from my side that I would like to share my um, journey of transition as well. That uh, I would, I have, I was a nurse, a bedside nurse, then a managerial nurse in a post anesthesia care unit for quite uh, ten plus years, and then I got a new opportunity and joined a different, entirely a different um, office, and then I worked. I was a forced to employ in that office, and I worked for that office, and it gave me an immense uh, opportunity to 
find different things to do research and to for professional development training education and i met a lot of different professions professionals along along with the nurses and the technicians and other allied professionals and uh, patients and mothers and parent educators i i was working with dr shalina bhumani for quite a long time uh, to do three years and she taught me a lot of things new courses and how to go about it how to be an author how to be a researcher how to do a erc that was the first time after 10 years that i did my first uh, research project i filmed my erc i go along with all the research and how to develop a um, outline for the research projects and uh, get the erc approvals and data collection and consent forms and all the procedures and methods that research method what to choose research method how to go about it analysis and then publication authorship and at that time i came to know that that there are the levels of the authorship there are first level first author second author last author and their impact and impact factor of the journal and what that can make in our resume lifted our resume so there's a lot of learning from dr shilina and the past couple of years that i have so these transition open my eyes that it's more than what we are doing, what I am doing for the quite long time, for the 10 years, it's more. And I need to be go out of my circle and meet with the people. I remember Dr. Uh, Professor Aisha in our last webinars when we were introducing our Embro, web Embro region to the uh, Embro webinar region, introdu introductory region. She said that go beyond and be uh, uh, do networking and socializing and meet with the people so that you can you know grow yourself personally and professionally and you know the opportunities out there. One of the things that I uh, I kept saying, and I, I still want to like, you know, um, reinforce that I don't know how I want to say that, just like uh, physician or the doctors have their uh, compulsory or mandatory uh, research submissions, research projects that they do in their residency, I think there should be a, some uh, something for us as well when we cross our bachelor's and we go into the uh, bedside nursing. So there should be something from the academia that one research project or a color quality project is a must to submit to either national uh, national body of the uh, nursing or anywhere. So that nurses have a routine of working in the research and they have they have the understanding and they can feel that that they are doing something. They are contributing to something. So this is all from my side. Um, if we have, let's see if we have any comments or hand raise in the chat box so we can look after it because this is the last few minutes and we are going for Q&A. And then we, I will request Professor uh, Aisha if uh, she can have a few last comments, closing comments for all of us. Wow. Well, I just, um, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost speechless because I was listening to this and I was writing some notes and um, I laughed about, I was been thinking about what Nursing Challenge gives to me and I've written, it's my family, it's inspiring, it makes my heart sing, it's got vision, it's got impact. And I'm actually so encouraged. This is amazing what we've heard. And I shouldn't be amazed because I know that nurses are capable of this. And I think for me, the biggest thing is, and I know many people on the call here, and I think just this small group here are, are just amazing and inspirational. And we need to get that out there. So we're talking about it amongst ourselves, and that's wonderful, and that's what we need to do because nursing itself needs to know this about its, itself. So, and then the other bit of the job is letting everyone else outside there know what we can do. So there are two things, um, inside and outside. And this narrative of what nursing is, contemporary nursing, to challenge and respond to the biggest issues that we have in the world, nurses are absolutely fundamental at every level. And the evidence that we can develop, our understanding of the challenges, the problems from um, our first speaker, how we see the challenge and how we see the problem is very different to other professionals. And we can see the whole person and the whole community and the whole of society, not just a part of someone's body or a problem in a uh, in a community we see the whole thing and our skills and our knowledge and our intellect we are nurse scientists and we must never forget that so 
I'm feeling very inspired. I've been messaging Hannah to say, we need to take this webinar to the whole of Nursing Now Challenge across all the regions and think about how we can create this into one of our debates and um, promote everyone here who has been talking. I'm, I mean, it's just wonderful. And the networking is really key, the mentorship, those key, those key things that have come up. Aside from the fact that we bring ourselves what else do we need to support us? Because we don't work and operate in an environment where there is a clear pathway for us. But what we are seeing and hearing here is that there are pathways, there are commonalities, and those are the things that we need to promote to the youth because we are not seeing people coming into nursing. Their idea of what nursing is is not what we know, it is not our reality. So we need to take that reality out there, amplify it, and change the world's view of nursing. And you are the people to do that. We can help and support. My time in nursing has a different role. It's about supporting you to do that. And you are not the future, you are the now. I keep saying that. There is no future without what is happening now amongst us. And I know Angelique's put a love heart there because she is rocking it on the planetary health stuff as well. And so proud, she's a former student of ours. Um, and just wonderful. Clinton Aramoki, I was, was PhD supervision for Aramoki. I mean, Clinton, you're all just amazing, Mohammed. I can't, I am, I just, I can't mention it enough how much joy you bring. There is not this, can we do it? We are doing it. You are doing it. So let's take this conversation further. Don't stop. Thank well done, Sana and Zeb. Woo! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Such a motivating for, from your side to, you know, just rock on and do more and more. So this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. This is just the base yes. that we have created. We have yes. break the bricks and we have invited people that see research is the new horizon. And there are a lot of things that can do. And now we are going for more series and building on to the research with the different methodologies, types and everything. So this is just the beginning and more to come, hopefully, hopefully. Yes. We are not asking permission anymore. We are leading the way. We're leading our profession into this new era. So thank you so much, everyone, thank for you. joining. I'm thank you. Woo. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Wonderful. Lots of gratitude. And thank you so much, Professor Aisha, Hannah, for supporting, Sana, me, yes. and everyone. Oh, then a special thanks to our speakers. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll meet again. We'll invite you again for another series. So thank you so much. Thank well you. Well done. Enjoy your day. Fantastic. So inspiring. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you for everything you're doing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.